Amen. Hallelujah. We pray for this wonderful another Sunday blessing for us all, our children, oh God. Lord, maraming salamat po, Panginoon, na nandito kami ngayon. And I uh, would like to um, say hello to everyone, to each and everyone na nasa kanilang mga bahay, in all your places, wherever you right now. My dear brothers and sisters, this is the day again, once again, uh, na we... We will glorify the Lord with our praises and worship for this wonderful day, for all the things na ginagawa niya at patuloy niyang ginagawa sa buhay natin. He truly deserves to be praised at all times. Uh, I just uh, want to encourage everyone, uh, kayo na nasa inyong mga tahanan or even sa inyong mga workplace, na you got this special time with the Lord. Um, uh, have an intimate time to worship Him and to glorify Him. And uh, this is such a wonderful day na pinagtipon-tipon niya tayo. We may not be in the same building, but we are as one body of Christ. So uh, let's praise and worship the Lord Jesus, our God. Hallelujah. Let's just uh, offer a, a, a short prayer. And let's just close our uh, eyes and bow our heads. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God. For this uh, wonderful day, uh, for this such truly a blessing for us all, Panginoon, uh, nandito na naman po kami once again, Lord God, to praise you, to give you all the glory and all the highest adoration that you truly deserve, O God. Lord, let this day become such a meaningful day, Panginoon, sa bawat isa po sa amin, Lord God. We are continuously humbling ourselves before you, Panginoon. Let your Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, be upon us, Lord God. At this very moment, we would just like to seek your presence in us, Panginoon. We just want to enjoy, Lord God, na papurihan ka, Lord, and give you all the worship that you truly deserve, Panginoon. In our families, Lord God, we know na you are continuously protecting us, Panginoon. And uh, Lord, uh, allow us, Lord God, to bring you back. Lord, Panginoon, yung mga papuri po sa lahat ng patuloy mong ginagawa po sa amin, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this wonderful day. Lord, thank you for being with us, Panginoon. And we know that you are in our midst right now, Panginoon. We expect a lot from you to reveal your word today with us, Panginoon. And uh, Lord, maraming salamat po. I hope you will be delighted with this simple worship, Lord God. And this is for you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. I just want to encourage everyone right now, let's, let's give all our best to the Lord our God. Papurihan po natin sa Lord because yan yung, mga, yan yung mga bagay na He really longs for us. Yung maibalik natin sa Kanya yung lahat ng pagmamahal na binibigay niya sa atin. Hallelujah. So we start. Hallelujah. Praise your God. Praise your Hallelujah. Let's raise all our voices. Hallelujah, we praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, church. We're going to sing for the Lord. Hallelujah. Here we go. My Savior, Redeemer, lifting me from the mire clay. Almighty, forever. I will never be the same Cause you came near From the everlasting To the world we live The Father's only Son Come on, let's sing that again from the top My Savior, Redeemer Lifted me from the miry clay Almighty Forever, and I will never be the same because you came near from the everlasting to the world we live. The Father's only Son, you live and you died and you rose again on high and you open. Done. Come 
on, let's sing that again from the top. Hallelujah. My Savior, Redeemer, lifting me from the miry clay. Almighty, forever, and I will never be the same because you came near from the everlasting to the world we live. And for there's only son. You live. You live and you die and you rose again on high. You open the way for the world to live again. Hallelujah. For all you've done. Come on, we say that again. You live, oh God. You live and you die and you rose again on high. We praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because you came near from the everlasting to the world we live. The Father's only Son. Because you came near from the everlasting to the world we live the father's only son i sing you live and you died and you rose again on high you opened the way for the world to live again hallelujah for the Lord, for all you've done. Come on, sing, let's sing that again. You live and you died and you rose again on high and you opened the way for the world to live again. Hallelujah. For all you've done. Let's sing that again. For the Lord. And you live and you died and you rose again on high and you opened the way for the world to live again hallelujah for all you've done hallelujah for all you've done oh god for all you've done hallelujah and we praise the lord for all of what you have done for us lord god hallelujah let's continue to worship the lord our god with this wonderful song shout to the lord my dear brothers and sisters let us all re be reminded that in this situation that we are now the lord is watching us the Lord is looking at all of us. He wants to know if we are truly clinging on Him, if our faith is truly to Him alone. So I just want to encourage each and every one. Whatever you have right now, whatever you, whatever worries that you may have in your mind right now, leave it up to God. Lift it up to the Lord. Shout it out. Because we know that the Lord is in control of everything. He knows what he is doing. And he will never fail. Hallelujah. It's for you, O God. We praise you, God. My Jesus. 
Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty to worship you shout to the Lord all oh, the earth let us sing power and majesty praise to the King mountains bow down and the seas will the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in There is none like you all of my days. I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. You're my comfort, Lord. My comfort, my shelter. Tower of refuge and strength, let every breath, oh, that I am, never cease to worship you. We sing, shout to the Lord, oh, the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hand. Forever I love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have. Oh, shout to the Lord, oh, the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. I sing for joy at the work. Yes, oh God. At the sound. At the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I love you. Forever I stand. Oh, not Praise you, 
you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Truly, that there is no one like you. And we will keep on singing, Lord Jesus. On top of our lungs, oh Lord God, every day of our lives here on earth, God. That you are the one true God. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We praise you for your goodness to your people, to mankind, oh God. For your grace, for your mercy, Lord. Truly, Lord, that you are the most precious person whom ever we have received in our life, Lord God. Your name is so wonderful, oh God. And so we're going to sing this song. What a beautiful to help us be reminded that the name of Jesus is the name above all names. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You were the word at the beginning, the one with God, the Lord Most High. Your hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you. What a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus You didn't want heaven without us So Jesus you brought heaven down My sin was great, your love was greater could separate us now. What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Yes, we God. Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, O Lamb of God. We praise you, the King of kings, the Lord of all lords, the Lion of Judah, our provider, our shelter, our refuge, our strength, O oh God. We thank you for being our Redeemer, Lord. We thank you for bringing the salvation to mankind, O oh God, to your people, O oh Lord Jesus. We praise you and we to give all our highest worship and adoration to you and you alone, O oh Lord, because you truly deserve it. Because there is no one like you in all the heavens and in this earth, O oh God. We praise you. We will be forever grateful, O oh God, for the life. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, church. We're going to sing for the Lord. Hallelujah. Death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. 
You silence the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. For you were raised to life again. Oh, you have no rival. You have no Yours is the kingdom, and yours is the glory, yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ my King. What a powerful name it is Nothing can stand against What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus Will you have no rival Will you have no equal Now and forever God you reign Cause yours is the kingdom, and yours is the glory, and yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ my King. What a powerful name it is, nothing can stand against, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. The powerful name of Jesus, hallelujah. We praise you, O oh God. We praise you for your name, O oh Lord. God is the name above all names, O oh Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for your presence, O oh God, in this place, O oh Lord, in our homes right now, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to you, O oh God. Hallelujah to you, oh Jesus Christ. Praise you, Jesus. Jesus our Lord, come on for your return across the earth. May nations rise to worship you, O Lord and King. Maranatha. Do not delay, come we long for your return, all tribes and tongues, turn to Jesus, we dance and praise before his coming from King of Kings. King of kings will prepare the way of your return. We'll take up our cross and go out to the ends of the earth. When the 
glory of your kingdom is covering the earth. From our nations we will usher in our King. Maranatha, Maranatha. I'm in Jesus' cup. We long for your return. Maranatha. Jesus come, we long for your return. King of kings, king of kings, we'll prepare the way of your return. We'll take up our cross and go out to the ends of the earth. When the glory of your kingdom is covering the earth. Our nations, we will usher in our King. Maranatha, Maranatha. I'm in Jesus' come, we long for your return. Maranatha, Maranatha. I'm in Jesus, come, we long for your return. Maranatha, Maranatha, Maranatha. I'm in Jesus, come, we long for your return. Maranatha. Jesus come, we long for your return. Sing again, King of Kings. Yes, oh God. King of Kings, we'll prepare the way of your return. We'll take up our cross and go out to the ends of the earth. When the glory, when the glory of your kingdom is covering the earth. Our nations, we will lost in the King. Maranatha, Maranatha. I'm in Jesus' come, we long for your return. Maranatha. I'm in Jesus, come, we long for your return. Maranatha, Maranatha, Maranatha. I'm in Jesus, come, we long for your return. Maranatha, Maranatha. I'm in Jesus, come, we long for your return. I'm in Jesus, come, we long for your return. I'm in Jesus, come, we long for your return. Oh, we long. For your return, we praise you, Jesus. We praise you, oh God. Come on, let's give all the praises to the Lord our God. Hallelujah. Let's give all our claps to the Lord our God. Hallelujah. We praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We praise you, oh God. Hallelujah. Puri himpo kayo, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you, God. We thank you for this wonderful moment, such a special moment once again, Panginoon, na we were able to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, we continue to acknowledge your dominion 
and your sovereignty amongst us, your children, and in this world, Lord Jesus. We know that you're continuously protecting us, and we are truly grateful for that, Panginoon. Lord, as we continue to walk with you in our Christian journey, Panginoon, we, we would like to ask the presence of the Holy Ghost in our life to continue to help us grow in our faith with you and in our relationship with you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you are always giving us that opportunity to share your word to the people as possible, Panginoon. And Lord, as we come to you today, as we continue to seek your presence today, may you reveal your message and may you anoint the person who, whom you are going to use today, our brother Manny, Lord Jesus. Lord, use him mightily, Lord God, that it is you and your word that is going to be revealed today, Panginoon, and that we may be able to apply what we are going to hear today, Lord Jesus. Give us a humble heart, Panginoon, and an open mind and a spirit, Panginoon, to listen to you, to your voice, Panginoon. We thank you for the life of each and every one in their homes and to wherever they are, Lord, I know and I am certain and I am confident that you are protecting us all, including my brothers and sisters. Kung nasan man po sila, Panginoon. Patuloy niyo po kaming ingatan, Lord, and we love you so much, Lord Jesus. We thank you and would like to give you back all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And now we may call on uh, Brother Mani to give us the wonderful message of God today for us. Thank you, Ferdy, and thank you, Brian, for that wonderful worship. Mm. Before I start, I just would like to commit this time to the Lord. Shall we all pray? Our Father in heaven, thank you that despite of what is happening to the world, still we can praise you, still we can come to your throne, to your promise that you will always be near to us. Lord, with the uncertainties that is going all around the world, our faith is secure. And thank you that we are blessed because we have you. Father God, I pray, Holy Spirit, give us ears to listen and give us minds to understand of your word today. I ask that nothing more and nothing less but through of your word this is what we're going to hear today. I pray for blessings to everyone who is listening, whatever part of the world. Lord, I pray for protection and I pray for your cover for everyone. Thank you for this chance and thank you for this time to study and to hear your word. I bless you and I praise your holy name. Amen. What, what is happening in the entire world today is that everything that can be shaken is being shaken right now. And it is irrespective of race, irrespective of culture, irrespective of social standing or social position, COVID-19 is a threat to everybody. No one is exempted. And if we are listening to the news, we keep on hearing the word new normal. Yeah? W what does it mean? I mean, our lives are being shaken. The very core of our, of, of our family, I mean, it, it is being shaken. We, we don't know what will happen tomorrow. Uncertainty is floating all around. And if we keep on listening to the news, people are losing hope. People are getting desperate because they cannot find answers. 
So I'd like to share this afternoon, or I don't know what time, whoever is listening to different parts of the world. I just would like to, to say to you, have a, have a blessed day. It is like 10, uh, 1 1.40 in the afternoon here in UK. I don't know what time it is in your part of the world, but God bless you. Thank you for being with us. The Passion Church is blessed that you share your time with us this afternoon. And I'd like to talk about the hope in the nearness of God. Again, hope in the nearness of God. And I'd like to read uh, two texts in the Bible. First is in Psalms chapter 145, verse 18. It says, The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. And the second verse is in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13. It says, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near through the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, the first question is, why do we think that God is far away? Even the way we pray, we think that God, that God is distant. Why do we live that as if God is not near to us? Yeah? The, 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 way we, the way we express ourselves, the way we talk, our speech, our, our deed, it doesn't depict that God is near to us. But God's promise in these two verses is that he is near to us. You know, so, sometimes we can, th there are doctrinal teachings. There are teachings that we hear that uh, about misconceptions about Christianity, that we cannot be near to God. Maybe because it is, th the reason is we are too broken. We are too sinful to experience God's nearness. But nothing is farther from the truth. Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I come and stand at the door. Because he wants to come in. He wants to be near us. God longs to be near to us. But misconceptions and misunderstanding of our relationship to God somehow gives this division that we are far, that God is distant. But the truth is, according to God's word, he wants to be near to us. He longs to be near to us. We are told that experiencing God is for some people, not for us. And too often we feel that God is distant or separated from us. And we allow these perceptions or lies to place a rift between us and, ex and experiencing God's nearness. So th with, with these misconceptions, with these lies from the enemy or from the teachings that we hear, Somehow there is a rift between us and God. We cannot experience God's nearness because of what we hear, because of what we understand, or because of the belief that we have that I, I am too sinful. I, I, have, I, have, I have broken God's laws. That's why God is distant. But that is not what God wants to do with us. God wants for us to be near him. Even in this time of pandemic, God is calling us. He wants to be near you. In times of uncertainties, in times of difficult circumstances, God is calling you. God wants to come near to you. So I hope by, by the end of this teaching, we will be able to, to cast out this belief or we'll be able to cast this conception that God is far, that God, God is distant because that is not what God's word is telling us. Uh, maybe as a result of lack of experiencing God in the past, we believe that we cannot experience God's nearness. We may have experiences in the past that made us think that G God is distant. G God cannot come near me. Or whether it's the effects of sin or shame or lack of understanding of what is available to us in Christ, we all have the ability to put veil in our hearts. Our experiences, our belief, wha wha what, we, what we heard from, from the different teachings, Maybe this put a veil in our hearts, causing us to believe that God is not near. But let, let's, try to, let's try to understand what God, what, what does it mean to have a relationship with God? A relationship with God is not distant. A relationship with God is him having, residing in our hearts. That's how he is near to us. He is in our hearts. When we accepted Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit is reigning in our hearts, and that's how close we are. That's how near we are to Jesus Christ, to our God. 
But we all have the ability to go our own way and miss out on abundant things. Abil we, we, choose to, we choose to believe that God is far anyway. That God is, God is not near. God cannot see me. We all, but these are lies that the enemy is putting in our minds. And this is the exact opposite of God wants us to have with him. It is the nearness. It, it can be the, the physical nearness. I hope that we, we all experience that God is in our hearts. God is near to us. And our title says, Hope in the Nearness of God. Our hope, the core of our hope, can only be anchored in God's nearness. Our hope can only be based, the truth of our hope can only be based if we believe that God is near. I just would like to point out that uh, God cannot force us into nearness with him. He is that gentle God who is just calling us, who is just knocking at the door, at the door of our hearts. So God cannot force us into nearness with him. We can choose to live as if God is still far off. So when we feel that God is far, that is our choice. That is our understanding. It's not from God. Because again, God cannot force us into nearness with him. And it is our choice to believe and it is our choice to act that God is near. And two things that I want to point out is the enemy's desire for us, God's children, is to keep us from walking in the fullness of what God intends for his children and that is to be near him. So the enemy would try his very hard to let, us, to, to let us be distracted that God is not near. Satan cannot keep us from eternal life. Our salvation is secure. Our salvation is already, it, it, it's 100%, it's already there. But what he can do is he can keep us from experiencing the abundant life available to us through the nearness of God. That's why he is attacking us. He, he, he doesn't care anymore that, that we are not going to, or that we are going to heaven. Because it is already sure. What he is doing right, uh, right now for us is he is keeping us from experiencing God's nearness. How? By making us feel guilty of what we do. No? By, by, by making us feel or, 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 or reminding us that we are too dirty, sinful, that God cannot come near us because he is holy. But all of these things have been dealt with by the blood of Jesus Christ, of the by the blood of Jesus Christ that has been shed on the cross, our nearness to God depends on the blood of Jesus Christ that is in us. It does not depend of how sinful we are. It does not depend of what we do that that is not pleasing to God. But our nearness to God is only dependent if we have the blood of Jesus Christ on us. Yes, we cannot on our own. We cannot come near to God. But because of the blood of Jesus Christ, he is near. Our God is near. So the truth is, God's heart is always open to us. All through the Bible, God is always thinking about us. His mind is always on us. His heart, heart, his heart is always open to us. That's why we can pray to him. The second truth is, his love is always for us. That's why he sent Jesus Christ because of his great love. That's why he sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross so we can go near him. Because that's what he longs. He wants to have that close, intimate relationship with us. He wants to have that nearness. That is the kind of relationship God wants us to have with him. And another truth is his presence is always available. No matter what time of the day, we can always call on God because he is near. No matter what your circumstance is, no matter what you are suffering, we can always call on God and we can always thank him because he is always near. It is us, it is in our thinking, it is in our mind that he is far. But the reality is, and according to his word, God is near. He, again, I would like to emphasize this, he longs and he desires to be near you. So this should be the core of our hope. The nearness of God in us should be the core of our hope if we are going through different circumstances. 
whatever problems, trials, or troubles we are having right now, the nearness of God should be the core of our hope. Because we know that we can always, He is always there for us. So God's nearness should be, that, should be at the core of our hope. And there is no greater source of hope than God's resounding declaration of his nearness. Again, I would say there is no greater source of hope than God's resounding declaration of his nearness. It is all over God's word. He is near. If we call on him, he is near. That is the resounding declaration of his truth. And the truth of his nearness profoundly impacts every aspect of our lives. It's when we believe that God is near to us that we can act differently. I mean, it, ha it has an impact of how we live our lives. Knowing the truth that God is near us influence our actions, influence our thinking. So the truth of his nearness has an impact on our lives. And he longs for us to know his presence moment by moment in everything we do. God wants in everything we do, God wants to be part of it because he is near. And the simple truth of Christian spirituality is that God longs to fill whatever space we make available to him with his nearness. We need to make that space for him in our heart. We need to make available a, a space in our hearts to, for, for God to dwell. We, we need to empty something in our hearts. We need to empty something of ourselves so that God can dwell in us, so that we can feel God's nearness. And to experience, so, so you, you, you might ask, how, how do we experience God's nearness then? If he is telling us that he is near, how can we tangibly experience, how can we literally experience his nearness? So to experience God's nearness, God's nearness is to simply open our hearts and to let him in. That's how you experience God's nearness. Open your heart and let him in. Then you would know and you would feel that he is near you. And to love him is to simply receive his love. Th this is sometimes where we go wrong. Because we think that to express our love to God, we have to do something. We have to be good. We, 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 have, we have to be generous. But first and foremost, to, to love God is to simply receive his love for us. Because we cannot love others if we do not have the love of God. We cannot love God if we do not receive his love. Okay? And abundant life boils down to the truth that God is near. We are always asking, we're always uh, Quoting the verse in John 10.10, 10, abundant life. But abundance in life boils down to the truth that God is near. You cannot experience abundant life that God is promising if God is not near you. So we need, we need to, to understand, we need to put it in our hearts in, 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 and in our minds the truth that God is near. And it is only in reminding ourselves that God is near where lies and misconceptions are broken and a pathway is laid for us to encounter his presence and experience his nearness. So we need to experience, we need to remind ourselves every day. You know? Remember the enemy is actively working in our minds that God is not near. God is far and he keeps on reminding us of what we did. That's why God cannot come near us. So every day we need to remind ourselves that God is near and that is only when the lies and the misconceptions that we allowed into our minds is broken and a pathway of encountering him and experiencing his nearness. So I, I would like to, to give this challenge to everyone, to everyone who is listening right now. The challenge of experiencing the nearness of God. First is take time to reflect on what truly matters in your life. Is there is something else that, that is more important than experiencing God's nearness? Or are you too involved with something else? Are you too involved with activities in life that you put God on the side? That's why you cannot experience his nearness. So try to reflect on what truly matters. 
The next is open your heart to him and center your focus on his nearness. Open your heart and, and think that God is in me. God is near me. He is in my heart. When we do these things, that's when we can experience the rest and the peace that God promised. When we experience God's nearness, that's where peace and rest comes. It is when we distance ourselves from God that we panic. It is when, when we put a division, when we put a rift between us and God, and we do things in our own way, that things begin to crumble. That we begin to experience trouble. But rest and peace is experienced when you have that nearness of God in you. And we need to cast aside, we need to, we need to rebuke all those things that, that we have learned that cause us to, to think and believe that God is far away. And we, we need to reflect also on some, on some things in our lives. Like, wh why, why do I think, I, uh, am I living as if God is far? Why am I thinking like this? We, we need to check on ourselves. We need to check our hearts. Because there might be something that you're doing or there might be something that you have heard before that you are believing that God is far. And what parts of my heart are veiled from the nearness of my heart? Is there something in me that I haven't surrendered to God? Is there, is, is that veil? Is there still a veil in my heart that drives, that, that makes a division from me and my God? Remember, during the death of Jesus Christ, the veil has been torn so that we can come near to God. So we should be experiencing, we should be feeling that kind of feeling, that nearness to God because the veil has been torn away. And another thing to reflect is, where am I going following my own way? Uh, where, where am I headed to? If I am following my way, my own way, wh what's my destination? Where am I going? We need to reflect on it. Following my own way keeps me at a distance from my God. And if I am at distance from my God, where am I heading? If I'm not following his way, wh where is the direction of my life? And where in my life am I not experiencing abundance? Because God is not near to me. Because I believe that he is far. Where in my life that the abundance of God is not happening in my life because I believe that God is, is not near me. And what beliefs or what lies am I holding on in my heart that result to me not experiencing the nearness of God? And before I end this, I just would like to say that having this feeling, I mean, God is not angry with you when you feel you are apart from God, when you are feel distant from God. That's why he wants you to know he is, he is at the door of your heart knocking because he wants to come to you. Don't ever think that God is hungry with you because you think you are far, you're far, far away from him. You feel far. You feel distant from God. Right now, I can say that God is looking at you. God is knocking at the door of your heart because he wants to commune with you. He wants to come near you. And my prayer for all of us, all of us who are listening, is that may our life be filled with the peace that comes from trusting in God's nearness. May we experience that peace because we believe that God is near to us. And may our life be marked by the fullness of what is available to us in Christ. God has a lot in store for us, but sometimes we cannot experience this because we feel that God is not near us. No? So may our life, from now on, may our life be marked by the fullness of what is available for us in Christ. And may we be a child of God who consistently and fully experiencing the love of our Heavenly Father. And to conclude this, before I end, I would like to say that whatever you are experiencing, whatever circumstances in your life is, troubles, problems, one thing, there is hope. And there is hope if you experience God's nearness. No? 
there is always hope when you are near with God. And the last thing I would like to say is the promise of God's faithfulness comes with the promise of his nearness. We have always heard that God is faithful. And God doesn't just promise faithfulness to us. He also promised his nearness to us. So I hope from, from now on, even at the start of the day, we experience God's nearness to us. There is nothing more that is full of joy. There is nothing more that is full of peace than having God near us, knowing that he is near us, knowing that he is in our hearts. Praise us. I hope we learned something this afternoon, and I hope you would reflect on what God is telling you, what God is asking you, and that is only to be near him. The first and foremost thing that we need to do is to experience his nearness, to invite him in our heart. And Pastor? Many thanks, Brother Manny, for a wonderful message that we've heard for today. You know, it's really inspiring to know about the nearness of God to those who believe and for those who would like to come before God. Mga kapatid, friends, our uh, colleagues, our family members, if you're watching right now, wherever you are, maybe you're watching from America, Australia, Philippines, or maybe United Kingdom, you know, to some uh, deep insight of what we've had today. Hindi ka iwanan ng Panginoon. Hindi, hindi ka iiwanan ng Diyos. No matter how difficult the situation that you're having right now, as just like, you know, from the message that we've heard, the fullness of God's promises is in His nearness. Our distance from the Lord Probably from our own viewpoint, it affects us. But not with God. Kahit gaano ka kalayo, Panginoon, no matter how distant you are from the God right now, maybe at one point you have abandoned God. Maybe at one point, nagtampo ka sa Diyos. But God is telling to you right now, God is just a prayer away. Napakalapit ng Diyos sa atin. God is waiting for you to come near to Him. Kapatid, maybe as you're watching right now, maybe you just happen to, to pass by and you have seen in this video, God has a purpose. God is knocking at your door right now. You know, one of the 14 wonderful names of God, that He is Jehovah Shammah. Sabi nun, Jehovah Shama, God is always with us. No matter how how try, how, you know how, how no matter how many times you try to get away from God and, and to go away from God, tanda mo po ito, hindi ka titigilan ng Diyos. Hindi ka bibitawan ng Diyos. Lumayo ka man, patuloy. If ito, you try to be distant away from God, you know, God is gonna keep on coming back to you and offering you another chance. But it, it's not too late yet. You can come near Him. You can come near Him right now. Maybe it is your first time to watch this film, that is uh, this video, this live streaming. If you're watching right now and you would like to surrender your life to God, maybe you are, you are a very religious people. Maybe you know God, you believe God. Maybe you are a part of a one active church somewhere else in the world always remember this if you are not related to him everything is nothing it's not enough for you to know God it's not enough for you to believe God there must be one wonderful decision that you have to make come near him right now come near him kapatid for so many years for so many years God is waiting is not getting tired reaching out for you but one day a 
maybe this is the day that you're going to surrender your life to Him. As I said, John 1, 12, in the book of John, chapter 1, verse 12, for those who believe Him, for those who receive Him, He has given Him the right to become a child of God. Maybe you think you're religious people, you're going to go to heaven. Maybe you think that you know God, you're going to go to heaven, or you believe God. Now, kapatid, there's one wonderful thing that you have to make a decision right now. Come near Him. If you haven't surrendered your life before God, why don't you try God this time? You tried many things. You tried many people. You tried many programs. It didn't work. Do you know what is missing? Because you are so distant from God. Tanda mo ito. It is not God who is distant from you. It is you who made a distance from God. Kung gusto mong bumalik sa Panginoon, if you would like to come back to God, you know, I can pray with a very simple prayer of acceptance right now. All you have to do, you have to admit you're a sinner. And because of your sin, you will die. I will die. And I will die twice. My body will die. And so is my spirit and my soul at the judgment day. That is the problem we have. But thanks be to God, God has made a solution. And the solution, He has died for you. Because you cannot redeem yourself from the penalty and from the power of sin. And the only one who can forgive your sins right now is only Jesus. If you're going to come near to Him right now, God can forgive you. No religion, no church, no ministers, no pastors, no priests can save you because all of us are sinners. The only one who can forgive your sins is the one who never sinned at all. And that person is Jesus Christ. Sapagkat siya lang yung hindi nagkasala. Kapatid, God is knocking at your door right It is not a coincidence that you're watching this live streaming right now because God would like you to come near to Him. Kapatid, if you would like to make a decision right now, you know, I can, I can lead you in a small prayer, in a very brief little prayer right now. But all you have to do, you have to come before God with a humble heart. If you would like to surrender your life to the Lord right now, at the comfort of your own home, I would like you to stand up. Don't be bothered if someone is with you. It's okay. It is the best decision that you could ever give to the Lord. It is the best and the first step that you can make to the Lord. That's how to be more, Lord, I would like to come near you. Forgive me, Lord, because I've been so far away. This is the day that the Lord has made for your salvation. Kapatid, why don't you stand up? Why don't you stand up right now where you're standing? Matagal ka nang hinahanap at hinihintay ng Panginoon. God has been waiting for you. This is your moment. I can lead you in a prayer. All you have to do is to repeat after me. After this prayer as if it is your own personal prayer, not mine. I'm only being used by God. If you're ready, there's no one who can make the decisions, only you and you alone. You're going to humble down yourselves and come near Him right now. If you would like to surrender your life, I would like you to close your eyes together with your wife, with your husband, with your siblings, with your kids. Bukang mahiya. God is speaking to you right now. If I could request as a gesture of our humbleness and humility before God, I would like you to close your eyes. And if you would like to surrender your life, would you mind to, to lift up your both hands right now? It doesn't need to be high, just good enough for you to show that you're humbling yourself before Him. And I'm going to lead you in a prayer of acceptance. Hallelujah, Jesus. Repeat after me. Father God in heaven, just repeat after me. Father God in heaven, today, admit I'm a sinner. And because of my sin, I deserve nothing 
but the punishment of hell. But thank you, Lord, for your great love for me. You have sent your son to die on the cross that through his blood, my sins will be forgiven. Father God, we thank you because you love us so much even though we are so distant from you for so many years. Today, I'm making a decision. As I confess my sin and repent for all my iniquities, Father God, cleanse me. Forgive me. I invite you to come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and Savior of my soul. Come and reign in me. Rule my life and be the Savior of my soul. I now accept you as my God and my King, my Father and my Savior. Forgive all my sins and write my name in the book of life that will give me eternal life through your Son, Jesus. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your forgiveness. Even though I'm a sinner, you have loved me unconditionally. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. If you pray that kind of prayer, there's a wonderful thing to happen in your life. You are now a child of God. Sabi sa John 8.44, You belong to your father, the devil, who is a liar, and his native language is lying. But when you surrender your life to God right now, sabi sa John 1.12, He has given you the right to become a child of God. So you have now a new father in the spiritual realm. Your father now is Jesus Christ. Kung hindi mo pa sinusuko ang buhay mo sa Panginoon before, you were a son of the evil. But now, you are a child of God. Kapatid, God bless you. May God continuously bless you and your family. And whatever you're having right now, whether it's diseases, whether you're positive of coronavirus, whether you are having a financial difficulty in your life, Maybe you are experiencing something that you have never experienced before and you're going through turmoil and challenges and trials. Always remember this. God is just a one prayer away. Just come near Him and God is going to bless you. Amen? And I would like to pray for you right now, for our, for our viewers right now. Father God, I pray that may your people, O oh God, be blessed abundantly beyond imagination that there will be healing of God for those who are feeling ill and sick right now, for those who are in isolations, for those who are in financial turmoil in their life. Father God, I pray that by your name, by the name of Jesus, as we apply the blood of Christ, that there shall be healing, there shall be provision, and there shall be favor among your people right now, O Lord. And Father God, we lift them up unto you. We don't know what's going to happen in the future. So assured, who holds and who are in control, and who is control of the future. Father God, we lift up unto you everything that we have, every struggle that we have right now, and we give you all the praises. We give you all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Pastor, for that um, wonderful message. Um, we truly praise God for everything that He has done in His life, in our lives. Um, I'd just like to read a verse for you guys. Um, it's a, it can be found in the last book of the Old Testament. It's Malachi and verse three, uh, chapter three, verse ten, and I'll read it for you guys so that um, you guys can hear it. Uh, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty. And see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room, you will not have room enough for it. Um, so, um, sabi dito, it says here that bring the whole tithe to the storehouse and test the Lord. So, uh, 
uh, brothers and sisters, would you would like to test the Lord in this moment and see if He is really capable of bringing, opening the floodgates of heaven? Um, I ch- um, you can send your tithe or your offering to the bank account that will be showing up in the screen right now. So it's a promise of the Lord that if you test Him in this, that see if He will not open the floodgates of heaven for you. So um, you're not obliged to give, but we do strongly encourage strongly encourage you to um, do so. And for um, next, if you did pray that prayer of acceptance of salvation with us and um, you want to learn more about God and you want to uh, connect with us even further, please um, contact us on the social media platforms that will be showing up on the screen as well. So we have a Facebook page, um, we have an Instagram account, and we also have a YouTube account. Um, please um Contact us here. You can find some of our videos on the YouTube account. Um, you can also message us on the Facebook page and also the Instagram account. Um, if you have any prayer requests or you want to attend any of our uh, online activities, please message us. Do not hesitate. Um, no, uh, and we'd be glad. We'd be glad to have a talk with you, even if it's just be a friend or a conversation. We'd be happy to do that with you. And lastly. Uh, if you do want to join us on our weekly like um, weekly activities, we have uh, a thing called Gospel and Friends. So if uh, we, we're going to show you the weekly schedule now. Uh, you can take a screenshot of it um, and then message us which one you want to attend. We have various cell groups, uh, Bible studies, online uh, life group, um, intercessions. We pray every day. Um, and also you could um, just do... Uh, you could just join us whenever you want. Just message us. Um, to God be the glory. Um, may God bless you. And uh, so see you next week. And please don't hesitate to con- contact us any further. Thank you for watching. God bless. Uh, so let's ask for your friends for the victory worship. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. So we move on to our final um, phase of our um, Sunday service. I hope that everyone have fe- uh, feel blessed this Sunday with a wonderful message that uh, God has revealed to us today. And as we uh, uh, end this uh, Sunday, let's give all the glory to the Lord with this victory song. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father God. We thank you for being near to us, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's give it all for God. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's raise all our voices to the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. My Savior, Redeemer, lifted me from the mighty clay. Almighty, forever, and I will never be. My Savior, my Savior, Redeemer, lifted me from the mighty clay, Almighty, forever, and I will never be the same, cause you came thee from the everlasting, to the world we live, my Father's only Son. Sing, you live. You live and you die and you rose again on high. You open the way for the world to live again. Hallelujah.
Jesus. Have a blessed Sunday to each and everyone and see you next Sunday service. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs>